Good morning. It's Monday, May 4th. May the 4th be with you. Um, we had some teachers turn in some Star Wars things. I did not get my Star Wars thing turned in in time because I just found a shirt today. <laughs> so that's all right. Um, but I hope you enjoy the fun things for today. Um, we're going to go over what we're doing uh, today. And then in your email, you'll have the daily assignment checkoff sheet for the entire week. And then you'll have today's classwork attached as well. Uh, so let's go ahead and start going over. I have new, different classes on today. So I know it looks like they're reflecting quite a bit. My other glasses um, just decided to break. So all right, we're going to do morning work, page 131. We're working on spelling uh, list 28. Um, and let me have a little gander to see what that list is going to be. So those are two syllable words for this week. So we're going to work on two syllable words. So you can do at least one assignment. You can do more than that if you would like to. Um, we're going to do one story for the week in ReadWorks the swimming dinosaur. So then after that, you have the question set and the vocabulary. If you would like to split those up, do the, read the swimming dinosaur today, tomorrow, just do the question set. And then Wednesday, do the vocabulary. Um, that would be totally fine. Um, you can uh, do it all in one day. You can do it all throughout the week, um, but really try your very best um, to do that. And then if you have any you haven't finished from the other weeks that we've been doing distance learning, then you should um, go ahead and, and try to fit those in sometime this week. We have five new vocabulary words. So we're on vocabulary week three. So we're going to do those words and their definitions today. That's going to be found in Google Classroom. So remember, the Google Classroom, and you will see that you have vocabulary for week three. So you'll just open those slides. And so, so far, I've added just the five words and then their definition. So this week we have chronic, spectator, veto, um, irritable, and... Ooh, we always run into this many, many Martinez pictures here and mimic. So you'll you'll write those words down and then you'll do the five definitions for those. All right. And then we're going to watch our slideshow on prefixes for our grammar lesson this week. And then we have a new writing um, lesson series that we're going to start. There's 10 lessons. And when you're finished, you'll have a paper that you are going to write using your opinion. So you're going to build something um, over these next two weeks um, that you have an opinion about. So it can be very fun. It can be really exciting. It can be very strong. It can be, um, uh, it can be a lot of things that matter to you and what you believe in. So it's about your opinion. So today you'll go over to Google Classroom. So we were just there. Let's go back. And you'll see opinion writing lesson one. And so we have a video to watch and then you're going to do um, some work on slide two. So we've got our video here. Just click on the little play sign. You might have to double click and then you can also make it bigger. And then there is a slide two that you'll type. See where it says type here? You'll click in that space and type your answers. And so you need to fill in all eight. There's four for favorites and four for I want. So you need to finish uh, all eight of those and then submit that. And that will be your assignment today. Um, and then we have um, our interactive notebook and our math is fun notebook activity. We're working on lesson 13.2. So you're just going to cut this paper out um, and glue it into your book. And we're just looking for the equivalent fraction. So we're going to go over that in just a few minutes. And then um, you can do practice some times tables if you'd like to. Listen to some number rock songs. Keep working on those multiplication facts. Those are very important. And then, of course, checking the choices at the bottom. And since it's May... Um, I will also be attaching 
a reading calendar. We're just going to do one for two weeks. Um, and, um, and if you haven't sent me your April reading calendar, please uh, do that as soon as you can. All right, let's get started on our morning work page 131. On the top, it says, read the bold noun. Can you see, hear, taste, touch, or smell it? Yes or no. So when you see the word mirror, can you see a mirror, hear it, taste it, touch it, or smell it? If you can say yes or any of those, you write yes. Tire, like a tire on a bike or a tire on a car. Can you see it, hear it, taste it, touch it, or smell it? Some of those things might not be a good idea. If yes, you can write yes. If no, you don't need you need to write no. Number three, kindness. Can you see it, hear it, taste it, touch it, or smell it? Yes or no. So remember back to abstract nouns. Happiness. Can you see it, hear it, taste it, touch it, or smell it? Yes or no. So remember, it's not. We're not looking for the effect of something that made somebody happy. We're looking for, could you actually touch or taste or feel what happiness is or what kindness is or what tire is or mirror? Number five, lizard. Can you see it, hear it, taste it, touch it or smell it? Yes or no. Fear. Can you see it, hear it, taste it, touch it or smell it? Yes or no. Then we're going to write a sentence using the abstract nouns that we have right here, number seven, honesty. So write a complete sentence, including the word honesty in there. Then number eight, childhood. Write a complete sentence, including the word childhood in your sentence. All right, in your math, look at the pair of shapes. We've got a square and a trapezoid. Then answer the items. Do both shapes have the same number of sides? You can write yes or no. Do both shapes have the same number of angles? Do they have the same number of angles? Do both shapes have sides that are all equal length? Do both have the sides that are all equal length? Do both shapes have any sides that are parallel? So both shapes have any sides that are parallel. And in our story, we're going to um, answer the question, what do you know about the speaker? So we're going to be hearing probably something or learning something about the speaker. And we're going to write a complete sentence about what do we know about the speaker. So we're going to go ahead and start. Ooh, we've got some dialogue like we did last week in grammar. Orlando, are you hungry yet? Mom asked my older brother again. He always wears headphones on road trips, and we have to repeat whatever we say to him because he doesn't hear it the first time. It's so annoying. When I try to tell him stuff, he doesn't seem interested at all, and he can't wait to put his headphones back on. So I chat with my parents, my dog, and even myself. I shouldn't be expected to stay silent, should I? I couldn't be silent even if I tried. So what do you know about the speaker? So this person who's talking in this story, what do we know about them? So once you're finished, you can show mom or dad or another adult at home um, and uh, then move on to your spelling. So here's our spelling list. Here's our regular list of our words, our two-syllable words. And then here's our alternative list of two-syllable words. And your spelling city assignments are already in there. And then here is our... Um, Math is fun, um, interactive notebook paper. So you're gonna cut out along the dotted line. You don't need to cut the center dotted lines, just cut around the outside. And it says, I can use a fraction to represent multiple copies of a unit fraction. So what th that means is, okay, we've got this number line broken up into eighths. We can see that one eighth, then what? Three eighths, four eighths, five eighths, six eighths, seven eighths, eight eighths. Okay, so we know we need to write in um, two eighths here. Two eighths. I wonder if we can make it bigger. Um, let's see here. Oh. 
All right, so we have two eighths. So we have everything all the way through eight eighths. But if we were to divide this same number line into fourths, right here would be one, two, three, four. So this one would be one fourth. one just a little bigger. It's not wanting to cooperate like the last one did. Well, guys, we may just have to let it be. Yep, it's just not going to cooperate with this, I guess. So this one is one fourth, and one fourth is equal. It's the same size as if we did um, two eighths. They're in the same spot on the number line. This would be two eighths if you broke it up into eight pieces. It also would be one fourth if you only broke it up into four pieces. So if we took a little marker and said one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, four fourths, then you can see that those spots, so we have some other equivalent fractions, six eighths and three fourths, four eighths and two fourths. Okay. All right. So on this number line, they've broken this one up into six parts. So we have one sixth, two sixths, three sixths, four sixths, five sixths. So what would this one be? We would have six sixths. Let's change up our. Oh, goodness, look at that. It gives another text box that was just huge. It's just not going to cooperate with this, I guess. All right, so if we broke this up into thirds, then... We've got one third, two thirds, and what would this be? Three thirds. So three thirds and six sixths are equal, and they also equal what whole number? It would also be the number one because that's from zero to one. All right, let's go down to the bottom one. This one is also broken up into eighths. So we have one eighth, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths, five eighths. What should this one be? Six eighths, seven eighths, and one or eight eighths. If we broke this up into fourths, one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, four fourths. So we have three fourths. All right, so after you finish filling that in, you can glue it into your book. And then the last thing we have to do today is our um, slideshow on prefixes. All right, 
So let's go to the beginning. All right. A, pre a prefix is a group of letters that are added to the beginning of a word. The letters change the meaning of the word. So if you had a partner with you, you could whisper, what is a prefix? It's a group of letters that are added to a word at the beginning of the word, and it changes the meaning of the word. So just like we've done our wow words, we've done some of those. So re plus read equals reread. The prefix is re, the root word is read, and the new word is reread. What does read mean? So read means to understand words, understand a story, understand a sentence by reading the words. What does reword read mean? It means to do it again, to read something again. So what do you think re means? Re means again. So to read again. Reread means to read again. There we go. If re means again, what do each of these words mean? Rewrite. What does that mean? To write again. Redo. To do again. Replay. To play again. All right. So we have another prefix. We have the prefix pre. That's the prefix. Pre is the prefix. View is the root word. When we put them together, they make preview. That's the new word. So what does view mean? View means to see something, to look at something. What does preview mean? To look at something before. So how did the prefix change the meaning? The prefix pre means before. So you're going to view before. So sometimes uh, when you go to the movie, you'll see previews. These are little clips of movies that are coming out and you get to see a little bit of them before the whole thing comes out. So there are a preview. If pre means before, what do each of these words mean? Preheat, to heat before. Pre-test, to test before. So like we used to do our pre-test for spelling so that we could decide if we were going to have some kids doing fourth grade list. Um, and so we do a test just to see what it would look like on the real test. So we call it the pre-test, the test before the real test. Preschool, school before going to regular school. We have the prefix dis and we have the root word agree and that makes the word disagree. So what does agree mean? So it means that you're going to have the same feeling about something or same opinion about something. What does disagree means? It means you have opposite feelings about something. So how did the prefix change the meaning? Disagree. The prefix dis means not or the opposite. So if you see dis, it means not or it's the opposite of the root word. Disagree means to not agree. If dis means not, what do each of these words mean? Disorganized, not organized. Disappear means to not appear. You can't see them anymore. Dislike means to not like. All right, we have the prefix un. When it's put with the root word tied, the new word is untied. So what does the word tied mean? Something that is bound together. What does untied mean? Something that is unbound. It's not put together anymore. So how did it change? The prefix un means not. So we have dis and we have un. They both mean not or the opposite. Untied equals untied, which is the opposite of tied, not tied. If un means not, what do each of these words mean? So sometimes we have words where we use dis and sometimes we have words we use un. They both mean uh, not or it means the opposite of. 
So unhappy means not happy. Unlock means to be not locked. Unbelievable means you do not believe. Use prefixes and root words to make a word for each definition. Okay, so if we look right before. So if we're writing a paper and we do a little writing before we do the actual paper we're going to turn in, we call that a pre-write. Not real means unreal. Look again. Relook. Opposite of respect. Disrespect. All right, guys. So that looks to be everything that we needed to do today. If you would like to spend some time um, practicing your um, times tables, you have those papers from last week. We, it's table, or it's put right after the Monday. If you still have not picked up a packet, I saw that there were still, I think, eight packets that were still at the school that weren't picked up. If you would like to pick one up so you don't have to print anything, you could certainly do that. Um, if you're fine printing things, that's certainly fine too. I will always um, attach the papers that you don't have at home um, with our daily emails that we do with our video. And then anything that I don't send a copy of, that means you have it in your book or your notebook. So um, that way we don't have to waste any copies. All right, guys, any questions you have, please let me know. If there's anything you haven't turned in from last week, like your daily assignment um, sheet, try to get that into me. Um, if you haven't finished your informational writing paper, um, try to get that in as soon as possible, too, because now we're starting another paper. All right. So again, this week, if we get our stuff done um, by Thursday, then you won't have any more new work on Friday. Um, but if you do need the rest of the week, if you need all the way through Sunday, completely fine. Um, and it, it, the timeline is just I would like you to finish the work. And so if you need more time, if you need less time, you just decide what's going to work best for you. But try to stay up on top of it just because um, things can add up quickly. All right, guys, have a great Monday. And I will send a read aloud um, video separately. All right, guys, I will talk to you in our read aloud. Have a great day.